Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is the mathematics of circular motion, and we want to know what are the main equations used in circular motion problems, and how can we use these equations to solve such problems. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When it comes to solving circular motion problems, there are three quantities of primary interest. They are the speed, the acceleration, and the net force. When it comes to speed, you need to calculate a distance per time ratio. For moving in circles, the distance for one time around is known as the circumference. It's 2 pi times r. And the time for going around once is known as the period. So the speed formula for circular motion is speed equal 2 times pi times r divided by big T, which is the period. But sometimes we don't know the period. Instead, we're given some information like the object makes five revolutions per second. I would call that the frequency of revolution and represent it by the symbol f. So to calculate the speed based on knowledge of the radius and the frequency of revolution, I would use the formula v equal frequency times 2 times pi times r. When it comes to calculating the acceleration for moving in circles, the equation is a equal v squared over r. But oftentimes we don't know the speed, and instead we know the radius and the period. So I can take the expression for speed, 2 pi r divided by big T, and substitute it in for v squared in the equation, and come up with a new equation for circular motion, a equal 4 times pi squared times r divided by period squared. When it comes to calculating net force, it's always F net equal M times A. But A for moving in circles is V squared over R. So F net equal M times V squared over R. But sometimes we don't know the speed. So in such cases, we need to use knowledge of the radius and the period and the formula that you see right there in order to calculate the F net. That would be M times 4 times pi squared times R divided by T squared. In a typical physics course, there are typically two types of ways to use an equation. The first type is to use the equation as a guide to thinking about how a change in one variable might affect the value of another variable. For instance, if the speed is doubled or tripled or halved or quadrupled, how would that affect the acceleration or the net force? The second means of using an equation is to use it as a sort of recipe for algebraic problem solving. For instance, you might be given values of m, r, and period and asked to calculate the values of speed, acceleration, and net force. In this video, I'll be using five examples to demonstrate both types of usage of these physics equations. In the first three examples, I'll be demonstrating how to use the equations as a guide to thinking about how a change in one variable affects another variable. In our first example, a car is rounding a corner with an acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. If it rounds the same corner with the same radius, but with twice the speed, what would be its new acceleration? So to answer this question, I need to focus on the equation A equal V squared over R. And from the equation, I realize that the acceleration is directly proportional to the speed squared. In making this claim, I'm saying that a doubling of the speed would cause the acceleration to quadruple. Quadruple because, it, because the speed is being squared. So the new acceleration would be 16.8 meters per second per second. I get that by taking the original acceleration of 4.2 and multiplying it by 4. In our second example, a car is rounding a corner and has an acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. But if it rounds a corner with twice the radius at the same speed, what would be the new acceleration? So now I need to focus on the acceleration radius relationship, which is an inversely proportional relationship. In saying it that way, I'm saying that if the radius goes up, the acceleration goes down. And by whatever factor the radius increases, the acceleration decreases by that same factor. So a doubling of the radius would cause the acceleration to half, and my new answer is 2.1 meters per second per second. I get that by taking 4.2 and dividing it by 2. Our third example goes like this. A roller coaster car is rounding a corner and has a net force of 4,500 newtons. If the car had three times the mass and rounded a different corner with twice the radius and did it with twice the speed, then what would be the new net force? Here there are three changes being made in the variables that F net depends upon. So I'll need to make three changes to F net. The first change is the result of the change in mass. The mass was tripled, and according to the formula, F net is 
directly proportional to mass. So if mass is tripled, F net must also be tripled. One of the changes is I'll need to multiply by 3. The second change is the result of what happens to speed. I'm told that speed is doubled. And according to the formula, F net is proportional to speed squared. So whatever change is made in the speed, the square of that change must be made to the F net. If speed is, square, if speed is doubled, then the F net must be quadrupled. I'll need to multiply by 4. The last change has to do with radius. In the, in the formula, F net is inversely proportional to radius. So whatever change is made to the radius, the reciprocal change must be made to the F net. In other words, if R is doubled, the F net must be halved. I'll need to divide by 2. So if I take these three changes and apply them to the original F net value of 4,500, if I multiply by 3, if I multiply by 4, and I divide by 2, I'll get 27,000 newtons as the new net force. In my last two examples, I'll be using equations as a sort of algebraic recipe in order to solve a problem. In example four, a 920 kilogram car is moving at 16 meters per second and takes a turn around the circle with a radius of 32 meters. Determine the acceleration and net force of the car. So like any problem in physics, I'll begin by identifying what I know and what I'm looking for. I know the mass of the car, I know the speed of the car, and I know the radius of the turn. What I'm looking for is the acceleration and the net force. My equations are A equal V squared over R and F net equal M times A or M times V squared over R. In the solution for the acceleration, I'm going to say A equal the speed squared divided by the R where the speed is 16 and the R is 32. When I do my math, I come out with 8.0 meters per second squared. Solving for the F net means I have to go F net equal M times A, or 920 kilograms times the acceleration of 8 meters per second squared. When I do the math, I get approximately 7,400 newtons as my net force. Example 5 goes like this. A 95 kilogram halfback makes a turn on the football field, rounding a corner that is a portion of a circle having a radius of 12 meters. If the halfback makes the quarter turn around the circle in 2.1 seconds, determine the speed, acceleration, and net force. Like any problem in physics, I'm going to begin by identifying what I know, what I'm looking for, and what my equations are. What I know is the mass of the halfback and the radius of the turn, and the fact that the halfback makes a quarter of a turn around a circle in 2.1 seconds. And what I'm looking for is V, A, and F net. My equation for V is V equal 2 pi R over T. For acceleration, it's V squared divided by R, and for F net, it's M times A. Now for my solution. When it comes to calculating the V, I want to know the period. It's not stated, but I can do some reasoning here because the halfback does a quarter of a turn in 2.1 seconds. If the halfback kept the pace up and did a full circle around the circle, then it would be four times as much time in a period of 8.4 seconds. That's 2.1 times 4. Now I can solve for V. It's 2 times pi times R divided by T, 2 times pi pi times the 12 meters divided by the 8.4 seconds, and I end up with just short of 9.0 meters per second. Now to calculate the acceleration will be a bit more straightforward. I'm going to go the v squared I just calculated divided by the radius. So I'm not going to take the 9.0 rounded figure, but the 8.97597 figure, square it, and divide by my 12 meters. When I do, I get an acceleration of approximately 6.7 meters per second squared. Now for the F net, I'm going to take the mass and multiply by the A I just calculated. That's 95 kilograms times the 6.71401 meters per second squared, and I end up getting an F net of 640 newtons. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a concept builder and a minds on physics mission, both of which are great conceptual reasoning exercises. There's a, several problems at our calculator pad that has problems, answers, and audio guided solutions. And finally, there's the tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.